Hourlings. Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Hourlings Podcast Project. I'm Marty Wilsey. I'm your host. Tonight we're going to be talking about writing series. But before we get started, uh, we're going to introduce ourselves again. We'll start with Jeffrey this week. Hello, I'm Jeffrey, and I am an eclectic person who likes things like I've been lobbying for the ERA for three years now. Thank goodness we passed it. That's a saga. And we're going to talk about sagas and series today. Dave? Hi, I'm David Keener. I write science fiction and fantasy. Uh, and several, well, all of my stories are, at least uh, in my mind, they're pilots for series. And I have two novels coming out uh, this year that, uh, well, in 2021, that I hope will be the start of some interesting series. Jay? Hello, I'm S.C. McGowey. Uh, I write YA, contemporary sci-fi and fantasy. And my fun fact is that I absolutely love honey. Uh, you can call me a honey bear. Um, and I have farmed honey or right? be kept or whatever you call it. I be kept a little bit, um, learned how to do it, got all dressed up with the, the net and all that, uh, which took a great deal of courage because one fourth of July, I got absolutely pulverized by a hive of bees. Uh, mm. Just stings all over my body, uh, hurt all night long. And what do you know, I still love honey. <laughs> I still love bees. So that's went, my fun fact. You went eight for the apiary. There you go. Um, I'm Erica Rue, and I write mostly science fiction, and I am finishing up my first series, uh, The Keepos Chronicles. Excellent. So tonight we're talking about um, writing series books. Uh, several of us are either planning it or have done it or have thought about it, how we're doing it. Basically, we're going to just have a conversation about how we... Uh, how we manage it. Uh, did they happen, you know, planned in advance? Um, I guess I can start. Um, I, my first three books were actually a series and I had planned them as a series from the beginning. I had completely outlined all three books uh, before I started writing even. And um, uh, the difference in my series, that particular series, every book in that series um, starts at exactly the same moment. And it's kind of a Rashomon kind of uh, um, uh, trilogy. So um, I plan them out. I'm, I'm a straight up planner for uh, uh, writing a series, writing the arc for the entire series. I knew how the series was going to end um, uh, before I even started writing the last book. What about you guys? Yeah, I've written, um, you know, my, my first shot at fantasy, traditional fantasy, was a trilogy. Um, and looking back, I'm wondering if there is just something, like, in the DNA of sci-fi and fantasy writers that makes them think that all, all fantasy stories must be trilogies. Um, I think a lot of people just jump right into having a trilogy or some kind of series. Um, when really, it might have been more helpful to me as a new author if I wrote a lot of books because I could practice with them. Um, but as I got better, uh, I wasn't stuck with my mistakes in the first book uh, or my, you know, my novice uh, prose in that book. So yeah, looking back, it might, might have been better if I had done more standalones, but it seems to be that a lot of sci-fi and fantasy authors think that um, they have to tell their stories in trilogies. Uh, yeah, because of a lot of... That's a very interesting point about series. I organically wrote the kind of books that I like. And I have an enormous capacity yeah. for stories. I like the I like the three volume yeah. ginormous, you know, uh, two thousand page. Uh, well, there have been so many, been so many like, idyllic icons like Lord of the Rings and um, you know in in the in the YA world Divergent and almost everything in YA seems to have come out in, tr in a trilogy. And I know there's probably a marketing reason for that too. Well, I well, also have a complex story and know that it is going to come to an end. It's not going to be interminable like uh, <clears throat> Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah. there's something to be said for J.K. Rowling in her seven book series or... Uh, or um, well, uh, no, and, and hers was planned, I think, to be seven years. Hmm? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Seven, the number that, magic, that resonates in the magic realm, and, and she set it up so that there was 
um, students would have seven years at Hogwarts. So I, I think that was pretty carefully designed yeah. from the beginning by her. She may not have had all the details, but I think that con conceptually she had that. Mm -hmm. I do. I was going to say, I was going to compliment you, Erica, that you have a nice four uh, volume series. And I think that's really cool. I, I do recommend planning it out. Um, when I started my series, I knew that it would be three, maybe four books. And this fourth book was really hard to write because I did not do adequate planning. So I'm planning my next series now, which is gonna be a trilogy. And um, I did some research on like how to write a series and the, like the different arcs that, that you need to think about and put in. And so I'm, I'm plotting that out and I'm not starting it until I've got a lot of my milestones really figured out and set, I'd be set down. I'm curious about your research because I, I haven't actually seen a lot of There's not. <laughs> I, I, there's not because um, I, I was looking for that same sort of thing and there's just not a ton of stuff out there. Um, I have a know. workshop on it but, but uh, like I said when I was doing the research for the workshop there wasn't much out there at all. Mm. And everybody's writing a series it was really an odd lack. Mm. The biggest mm. The biggest thing that I think has been helpful for me is I'm modeling it off of um, a type of series that I like to read. And so I've read um, probably two or three trilogies that are this, like, this specific like, genre, subgenre. And I have an idea now of what they're like. And so I was able to, you know, go in and list the tropes. And so, like, you know, I, I spent you know, like 20 minutes doing that, just sitting down and writing down all of the different tropes, like, oh, you need this, they all have this. Um, and that was that was really helpful. But the dividing lines between the different books in the series or trying to write a romance over um, with, with one protagonist over three books and figuring out where the stopping points are to make it, uh, to make it flow, to give you that, that conclusion, yet it's not, it's not over. There, you don't have the happily ever after yet. Yeah, yeah. everything I've read about about series and sequels uh, is that it gets harder as you go along in in the if you progress through the series. Like it's harder to write the second book than it was to write the first book, and so on. And the reason for that is that the stakes have to rise, but the rules you set can't change. Right. Uh, that is a very difficult combination. Well, I, I think that's a, a fallacy. I, I think. Uh that is a failure of world building. Mm. Uh, because I, I don't think, uh, I mean, you see that in, for instance, a, a series like Buffy the Vampire Slayer where the stakes had to get higher every single year and the big bad had to be badder. Um, mm. But ultimately, I, I think if you've done your world building, there's enough threats out there, there's enough uh, organizations and opposition and, and such um, that I, I don't think every threat has to be the evil dark dark lord that's about to take over the universe. But going back to J.K. Rowling, I think that there were a lot of uh, errors in her planning of that seven book series. Uh, as she tried to have raised the stakes for every year, uh, some things that she had set, some rules that she had set in the earlier books uh, really tripped her up, such as the, the time turner, mm -hmm. um, the, the existence of ghosts, which proved uh, that death ray wasn't anything to worry about. So then, you know, why was there such a, a, a strong uh, theme of death in the final book? Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I think that there was a lot that we can learn from what she failed to do as she progressed through her series to keep those stakes realistic. Well, in, in fairness to her, you know, when she was getting her first and second book published and stuff, uh, I don't even, I, I'm sure she had sort of a conceptual overview but I doubt if she had all of the details worked out for the entire seven book series. Yeah, yeah. but you just, you just argued that she had them planned. And so I think- I think, some... I think she had a conceptual overview of the series. She wrote last That's year. not quite the same thing as having everything planned. No, yeah. it's not, not at all. She knew where she wanted to go with that last chapter. Now for me, the, it's kind of interesting because I've had this idea for a little, really long time, but I'm doing it now. I'm gonna write this novel and the next and the next and the next because I have a huge plan that has got little mini to a great big arc. I'm gonna try something that very few authors have done, but I believe in myself and I'm gonna try and do it, which is to have this smaller arc that goes over a few books and then a bigger arc that goes and layers on top of that and top of that. 
So it's sort of like you have this smaller issue that you have to get through, but then a bigger issue that comes in the next set of books and a bigger issue that comes in the next set of books. Right. Raise the stakes that way. Yeah, that was the hope. Yeah, it's worthy to note. I, I read a lot of series books and they they kind of fall, fall into a couple different kind of categories. There's the series where you get to the end of the book and it's just like a chapter break. And you buy the next book and it picks it up like the next chapter. So right. it's like a, a contiguous story that was just seemingly arbitrary cut up into mm -hmm. volumes. That's one kind. The kind that I like the best is the one where each book is completely intact in its own smaller story mm -hmm. that uh, advances a, another arc that goes mm -hmm. forward. That's the kind of series that I really like. Right. And those series can have greater amount of legs because I've read a lot of series where each of the individual books have have their own plot, their own nine-act structure or whatever, but there's 10 of them. And each of them can be, you know, an advancement of other characters or a larger plot or things can escalate or uh, the characters, though grow as the books go on and i like that a lot with series yeah you get, a, you get a real chance to grow your characters to the point and if you get fans associated with those characters you know it's 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 really great i would say you've just described the typical mystery series uh, and also what uh, most authors are trying to do with their uh, uh kind of their um uh, urban fantasy story mm -hmm. where you're you're following uh, perhaps uh uh, somebody like uh, um, well, Jim Butcher with his uh, Dresden Files, you're following a person from story to story and, and things are, are progressing and characters are changing, uh, or, or some of the other urban fantasies. Or like police procedurals, um, yeah, FBI throwers. Yes, who wrapped in Zelda or... that mysteries, for instance? I mean, I will say that, yeah, no, perfect example of a mystery series. Grafton's really clever in, in the way she did that. Uh, and I will say, I mean, for me, it's, it's, I not only do I have that, but I have the outlines of every single book that I want to do in, in that entire series. And it does help me in terms of like saying, you're never going to get there until you write this one. And it's sort of a motivation to know where I'm going many books down the road. Now, I'm doing a, a series called the, the Thousand Kingdoms, which is a, a second world fantasy series. And what I've decided to do there is to have a bunch of a bunch of smaller series within the larger context, uh, and be able to have characters cross over into each other's stories. I expect some of those stories to be novels, some of them to be short stories, novelettes, novellas. Um, and I've got uh, three or four of them uh, done already, and I'm fairly happy with uh, how things are progressing with that. Um, so that is another type of series. I would call that more of a web. Mm -hmm. Any place. Um, but follow this character if you like them, or hey, this character crossed over. Hmm, let me check out their books too. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Something a little different. So what kind of uh, series don't you like? What, what are the mistakes that you've seen in series that uh, can go? I'll start with that. Um, Dave had mentioned Game of Thrones before. Um, yeah. A series that never ends, and you know the author just just doesn't, you know, gets old and and, and dies off before he can finish the series. I, <laughs> you know, it's I don't, I don't like time series. all over again. I, I don't like series oh. where I can smell the commercialism behind it. Like like we all know it should have ended, and there wasn't really enough content there, but it was selling a lot, so they they stretch it out into you know like, like remember the last i don't know a couple a couple of these big series that were made into movies they would like split the last book into two movies or something yeah right so just to keep milking those ticket sales so when i can smell that then i i, I don't like that series <laughs> yeah i hate it when last books and series are just phoned in yep uh, okay. don't do that divergent, divergent killed that model uh they made the third movie and the fourth movie didn't happen so didn't even happen no series i really can't stand it when there's like a really big cliffhanger 
like some cliffhangers are okay. Like if you've got like suspense, I don't mind. Something that's kind of unfinished where you're like, oh, I really need to know what happens next. I don't mind. But in, like a literal cliffhanger, like the person is hanging off a cliff and you're like, what happened? We're in the middle of like an action sequence. I can't, yeah. I can't handle that. <laughs> Especially when you have to wait another year. It's like, uh -huh. oh man, I hate when I finish reading a book and throw it across the room because yeah. it was just released two days ago and I finished it and it's like, oh, it's got a <laughs> I'm, I'm okay uh, with that, but you better, you better have a good payoff for that cliffhanger. Yeah. To it. Or, or alternatively, I've seen that where uh, you've had a trilogy. Uh, they did this with um, the Thomas Covenant Chronicles when it was released. They released all three books a month apart. Um, so you didn't have to wait long to, to resolve anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can remember as I was um, publishing my first three books, I was just getting beat up by readers demanding the next book and demanding things that be done or not be done. <laughs> you know, oh, if you kill this character, I'll never buy another one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, that was kind of cracking me up. But the weird part about that is that's a great it's, it's pressure. I actually was feeling pressured to like hurry the hell up uh, and finish writing the book. And uh, um, you don't want to you don't want to be suffering that pressure too much. Absolutely. Well, so you got to make sure all that stuff is pretty much, you know, r ready to rock before you start. Bad to. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do this, but there's something to be said. And I don't think any of you have done this, is to actually save up the books, write book one and then hold off on publishing it until book two is written. I don't think I'll do that either. But is there any advantage to doing that? There uh, could be no. a marketing advantage to it, um, but you have to be able to write them relatively quickly. Otherwise, you're just sitting on a book for a year. Mm -hmm. So if it's going to be a couple months, you can do some sort of release strategy with that. Um, but then your readers might sort of expect that pace uh, right. forever. So it's it's a lot of pressure, but it can be a good marketing tactic. Yeah. It's an opportunity cost associated with it. And the opportunity cost is if it ain't published, it ain't making you money. Right. I'll add a, you know, a piece of wisdom for those who are listeners who are interested in traditionally publishing and querying agents. Um, a trilogy or a book that's in a series is a bigger financial investment for a publisher, uh, and they may be less inclined to take a chance on a new author if you're querying with a series. Mm -hmm. So I do encourage you to write standalones if you if you can, you know, as a new author. Um, if maybe there's one idea that works for a standalone and one idea that doesn't work for a standalone, but when you're querying and you're, you're asking publishers to take a risk on you, be aware that they're probably not going to pounce on a new author that they need to publish three of their books uh, guaranteed in order to get you on the shelf. Right. Well, there's also another factor too, which is, um, and this would definitely impact a new author. Um, a lot of people have this expectation if they publish a, a trilogy, a, a lot of readers don't buy the books until the full trilogy is available. Mm. Right. Now your, your, your mystery series or your urban fantasy series that Marty was mentioning earlier, um, they don't typically succumb to that problem, but trilogies are a whole nother beast. Yep. Yep. When I published the third book in that series, the sales went way up on the whole series. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, now my biggest selling audio edition is the omnibus of those three books. Right. Um, I sell a metric ton of those. You know, it's a, it. you know, a 36 hour um action adventure audiobook that you can get for one audible credit mm -hmm. it's uh it's customers love that so i will say that my it tells you that people have the capacity mm -hmm. for long stories they mm -hmm. really do mm -hmm. and um people don't have you know the 10 minute attention span seems like everybody talks about mm -hmm. at least i don't man i i eat books it Capacity. Well, I, I do say that chapters should be bite-sized, but that's a whole other discussion coming another episode soon to your ears. But, um, you know, I, I do think that, yes, I want to write my book to be standalone if you like it, but if you want to read more about these characters, there are other books. 
I also think uh, that I've seen some authors having success with uh, novelettes and novellas. So there's a market for shorter works. You can listen to them in your car on the way to work much easier. Or if you just want to sit down for an hour or two and read a good story, boom, there you go. Yeah. You don't have to read a 400 page novel or a, you know, or, or a 1200 page trilogy. A good uh, cheat if you want to uh, query that series book that you have, but, uh, but don't want to scare away the publisher or the agent, is you could say, if it's true, you could say uh, this book works as a standalone, but has series potential. That's kind mm -hmm. of a nice balance halfway. Yeah. Well, I also think if you're dealing with a traditional publisher, you have to look at the other angle too, is do I want to give this um, traditional publisher uh, the first or, or second or third book in my series. If the publisher discontinues my series, it'll be the kiss of death for any other publisher picking up that series. Right. And it might be the kiss of death for me continuing it because I might not be able to get the rights back for the first three books. So I can indie publish the remaining uh, you know, additional books in the series. So that's a consideration too. Yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's all complex considerations. Right. It's how you sign the contract. The contract will typically st stipulate exactly what you said, David. And you can try and fight tooth and nail for that clause to be removed, but then you might lose the contract altogether. So David okay. had mentioned this kind of briefly earlier. Um, what I do with my most recent novels is they're not strictly a, a series. They're standalone novels, but they take place in the same world that my series occurred in. So it, all the world building that um, fans had come to love and enjoy um, is all in place still. And in context, these novels uh, occur within those, but there's straight up standalone novels um, that is, are lightly connected, not strictly a series. That's very... Uh, productive I have found. Well, I think there's an advantage to that as well in that, uh, you know, if I'm looking at Marty's trilogy and I'm going, oh, well, each book is $4.99. So to get the whole series, I got to spend, you know, 16 or so bucks. Oh, I can just try out this novelette for uh, two ninety nine, And if I like him, I'll buy more stuff. So it's a try before you buy type of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or more and than that, see? they're on sale in Kindle for 99 cents often. Yeah, oh, right, okay, 99 cents. That's a, that's a pretty, oh, I'll try them out for that yeah. price. I put, put the first one at 99 cents and then the other one's at full price. Yeah, yeah that's, that's how I have Still Falling, the first novel in my series is 99 cents. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's the drug dealer model of uh, marketing. It's, uh, you know, you give them the first taste for, uh, for low bucks and then they, you know, will suddenly next thing you know, they buy everything in your catalog, which is- Well, you probably don't want to do 99 cents right off. Wait until you got a couple more books behind it and yeah, then bring it down. Exa to exactly. And that's exactly what I did. And- um, Yeah, if you, if, you don't, if you only had one book, I wouldn't sell it for 99 cents. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So let's uh, wrap this up. Let's go around for some final thoughts. We'll start with Jeffrey. Well, I'm going to write this. I'm going to write this. I'm going to write this. I believe in myself. That is my final thought. <laughs> David? I think the trick here is for any series, you, you have to make them want more of what you just provided. It could be the same or different characters. It could be uh, about the world. It could be about the character, but you've got to make them want more or the series won't work. Jay? If you are a fantasy or a sci-fi writer, do not be afraid to write a standalone. Your story does not have to be a trilogy in order to be in the club. And if you're going to join the club and write a series, um, plot it out, <laughs> figure out what your milestones are. You can figure things out along the way, but you want to make sure you know where your milestones are so you don't get lost like two or three books in. Yeah, my, my final words would completely echo what Erica just said. I'm a big planner. I plot the hell out of everything. And um, that if you're writing a series, that makes it way easier to uh, know where you're going and not paint yourself in a corner in a book 
early in the series that's already been published, which I've heard happens pretty often. So uh, uh, it's another good episode. Thanks for uh, stopping in, and uh, we'll see you next week.